What up, y'all? I'm back with another review, and I'm here to review the new studio album from Jid, or J.I.D., entitled DiCaprio 2. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm not even sure what J.I.D. stands for. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, he dropped his debut album, The Never Story. This is his second studio album. He dropped his debut album, The Never Story, back in March of 2017. And so yeah, a year and a half later, here he is with the new album, and I... <laughs> For some reason, I just could not get into that project. I don't know why. I, th I think I might have been a little turned off by how much he sounded like Kendrick to me. Um, that doesn't sound like a Kendrick fanboy or anything, but he is one of my favorites. He's not my favorite, but I, I'd i say he's the best rapper on the planet right now. Um, well, at least... But at, I'm not going to lie, Jid might be challenging for that, though, because this project got... Huh, um, but yeah, I think it was just the Kendrick vibes, like the similarities with Kendrick, they kind of just rubbed me, the, they didn't even rubbed me the wrong way, but just kind of turned me off for some reason. Um, I don't know why, considering that I like Logic and he <laughs> has Kendrick vibes, Cole, and sometimes Drake vibes, but yeah. Um, let's go ahead and get right into this review. Please forgive me if I'm going to be a little all over the place because this album is so good. I'm just going to go ahead and say that now. This album is so good that I had to write notes. I, mean, I have my notes written down about the songs and notes just about the album in a summary anyway. But I had to go back and rewrite a summary and rewrite notes about certain songs because this album is so all over the place. There are so many quotables. I'm going to let y'all know right now. I'm not going to get all the quotables. Y'all are going to have to freaking listen to the album. <laughs> Or go on genius <laughs> and get these quotables because there are so many i was like I, i'm not i'm not about to put all this in the freaking review but um yeah what i know about him he's on dreamville with cole cole's featured on here um i'm not gonna lie i kind of get some kendrick and cole vibes and some anderson pack sometimes with some of the beats and the delivery on this on these beats just how um soulful that they can be but um and he does display his versatility here, not just on how the beats that he picks and that he can rap on, but how he can rap. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, <clears throat> the first, well, actually not even the first track. I told y'all I'm all over the freaking place already. Um, let me see. Let me, let me actually pull this up. Okay. So the first track is actually, I think it was Frequency Change. Um, yeah, Frequency Change. It was just a skit. Uh, but the second track, Slick Talk. Nah, let me make sure I don't have extra notes for Slick Talk. Because I had to go back like I told y'all. Okay. But yeah, Slick Talk. Man, here he was, like I said, showcasing his versatile ability. Uh, it starts off as a banger and he was just rapping quick as shit here. And then the beat switched up into something a little more eerie and I really fucked with that. And <clears throat> what did he say it was the type of shit that started beef... Uh, the slick talk, which led to stick talk, then sleep, and he was saying like if it's uh, it's a diss because if it's a competition, then he's setting the bar for it, and he said like it is a diss, like he's coming for niggas' heads here, man. I'm like, I'll say this too, like I don't think he just put hip hop on notice, he put me on notice, like um, I'm gonna have to go back and listen to the Never Story because this album is some <laughs> just some shit, man. Um, what's the next track? Cause I I have these written. I have my notes about these tracks written, um, uh, not in order. So the next track would be Westbrook, okay, which is featuring ASAP Ferg. I remember that, and I had to go back and listen to this more because uh, it just didn't hit me um, when I first listened to it the first few times. <clears throat> but yeah, what, what was they said right here? Live life like a baby that was dead at birth but came alive and fucked the nurses. Fuck. <laughs> then he said, um, if you don't like it, tell a nigga jump if you're feeling Kermit. If you're sleeping on me, we can make it permanent. It'll leave him stinking like he, uh, he'll really permeate, he really reeking. If it's down to me, I'm gonna do some shit niggas ain't never seen. Bitch, I dunk a three. And if you want more, I'm telling you, you're just gonna have to go read Genius. But yeah, this was a, um, this was a banger to, of course it was, ASAP Ferg was on it. Um, why is my, hold on. The next track is Off Deeds featuring J. Cole. Okay, if you're, let me say this now. If you're a J. Cole fan, don't take what I'm about to say as a diss to J. Cole. Um, I like J. Cole. Like 2014, Forest Hills Drive is a personal classic to me. Uh, KOD, uh, well, For Your Eyes Only, that's cool. K 
KOD's cool. Uh, Born Center is is, is great. Uh, Sideline Story. I mean, I, I'm familiar with Cole. Like I've heard every project. Uh, Friday Night Lights is a classic. Um, I think hip hop would consider that a classic. <clears throat> then there's the warm up and the come up. I think the warm up would be considered a classic too. But if anything, he has one classic, maybe two. That it would be Friday Night Lights, and for me personally, it would be um, Forest Hills Drive. So don't take what I'm about to say as a diss. But I felt this track could have been on KOD. I'm like I'm not gonna lie. I feel like it was a trap banger. First off, uh, automatic. The flow was on some automatic trigger flow here. Like Cole, um, he was bragging on the duo, like him how how much of a tandem him and uh, J.I.D. were, I was like, okay, that kind of makes me want to see Kendrick versus um, the new kid on the block and, um, and TDE, Reason, because his album, there you have it, just fantastic. So I want to see Cole and Jid versus K.Dot and Reason. Like, that would be some shit. But yeah, I feel like this could have been on K.O.D. and it would have been better than most of the tracks on K.O.D. Because, what? My bad? That's another track. That's another track, actually. Uh, but yeah. So I kind of spoiled with the next, well not the next track, but the track after this. But yeah, um, so I want to see Cole and uh, Jid versus K, K Dot and Reason. That'd, that'd be some shit. Um, OG, like the top of the label versus, um, or the main dude, the main MC, the head nigga of the label versus um, the new, versus the other head nigga and his, um, the new dude on the block. Next track, 151, Rum. Just a fucking banger. That's what I have to say about this track. It just bangs. That's, this is what I mean when I say he's versatile. He can be on trap. He can be on these bangers or trap bangers. He can be on these. Well, he can be on these other beats and be versatile that we haven't gotten to yet. So I'll, I'll save that. But yeah, the next track, Off the Zone, is a perfect example. Um, it was a lavish banger. And I feel like this could have been on KOD. Um, I feel like Off D's could have been on KOD just because of the beat and like what Cole was on. I felt that Cole was on that, too, on that track. But I feel like this could have been... This is one of my favorite tracks, by the way. Maybe my favorite. I feel like this should have been on KOD. Because he was just saying, like, lay off the drugs. And he wasn't trying to seem preachy. Like, Cole kind of comes off as... He didn't say that part. Cole coming off as preachy. But Cole does get accused of coming off as preachy. So, um... He was just saying, like, yo, I'm not trying to sound preachy. But, yo, just lay off the drugs, man. Like... And he stays off drugs as an example, like, uh, so he won't be a hypocrite. And he's saying, like, we already have enough against us. Like, well, how should we get on drugs? Like, he's just saying, like, I'm not hating, but he told the dude, like, yo, I'm going to throw the cigs away if you got them around me. Or if you smoke them around me, I'm going to break them. And he was just saying, like, I need a clear vision, and I need my niggas to have a clear vision. And I need my people to wake up and see with, um, see with their vision. And uh, he was saying, like, how he understands addiction, so he's sympathetic, but he knows he has to. Uh, strength is essential and discipline is essential to not become an addict in the first place and um he just saying like there's some other shit we could be on other than drugs and i was like that that's what cole should have done that's I, i'm not saying cole couldn't have done that but that's what cole should have done that's what i wanted to have on kod like that would have made that album even better uh, it was a cool album anyway but i'm just saying like fuck man <laughs> freaking jet over here man god uh the next track is working out that's a track I had to go back for. Um, let me see. I get, yeah, okay. But yeah, working out. Um, what can I say, man? He was just here saying like, he's fly now. So as people are fly now, like, um, how he's been working hard, but shit ain't necessarily working out. Uh, and how he's been praying. His people are on now. Now that he has a little cash, so now they're working. They're working out. And he was talking to this girl, saying like, she sees. He sees how she's working out. Um, well, first, because she has a nice ass, so she's been working out, and she has a new job, and he was just asking, like, how's that working out? And then he just said how he fucked with and appreciated how she worked, how she worked out, and how she was moving, uh, just living her life and everything. So, yeah, that was a, that was a cool track. The next track is, um, I'm sorry, I just have to look off my phone for this, because I don't have any of this <laughs> really in order. Uh, the next track is Tide, featuring Black and LMA. LMA dropped a a project, I don't know if it was a, I can't remember if it was a EP or a mixtape, well, album, I'm not sure, but, um, it was cool from what I remember, definitely check that out, I can't remember the title, but I remember that she did drop it, something recent, uh, past, but yeah, um, it was just a track about fighting with the girl and how you just tired of it, and that actually sets the tone for the next 
two tracks after this. The next track, Scrawberries. Man, this there's a quote here. I was like, fuck. I, it was like the first note I had written about this project because that shit. <laughs> fuck. It's featuring BJ, BJ the Chicago Kid, Scrawberries for the ladies. What did he say? Um, you got a couple abortions, now that pussy a haunted house. That fucked me up. I was like, Whoa, what? Fuck, that's cold, but at the same time, that's fucking cold. What the fuck? I got Andre vibes here, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I got Andre vibes. I know he's from East Atlanta, so it's not too surprising, I guess, but I did get some Andre 3000 vibes. And, um, this kind of expands on the track Tide, because it's like, as far as the fighting goes, he's kind of expanded on it. And just saying, like, he was trying to get in touch with his senses so he could be better with his sisters. And uh, But niggas think that you're feminine when you're sensitive. And he said his homegirl's rapping. She a feminist. She hold it, he hold it down. She hold it down for the women. He called it feminine. And uh, what did he say right here? Tell him how you really feel, head ass, because ass shots and uh, ass shots are dead ass and fake tits been around. We gas it. Girl, you perfect without makeup or plastic surgery and what did he say i'm gonna tell you the truth or what did it i forget it, how the rest of that went but yeah uh let me just say this too this is not a diss to drake but i know nice for what was for the women i i fuck with this more than nice for what i would rather listen to this i feel like this is better for the women than nice for what i feel like nice for what's more for the ego um this strawberry is more for i'm um, just uh conscience i guess you could say for for guys too though trying to get in touch with your feminine side and everything or your senses not necessarily feminine side but um but yeah now the next track is uh hot box featuring joey badass and method man <laughs> method shout out to method man because he's the best of wu-tang that's still rapping like i feel like ray and uh ghost are second but yeah hot box it's it's cohesive with the previous two tracks, at least J.I.D. with Jid's, um, his verse, because he's talking about fine, fine girls and everything. Uh, it's it's pretty hip-hop. The beat's pretty hip-hop. It's a real head bopper. And J.I.D., like I said, he sticks with uh, the theme of the last two tracks following this up. Um, but Joey and Method, they're, they're on some weed shit. What did, uh, was it Method that said? No, it was, um, it was Joey. When I hit the spliff, only time we face L's. And he said, I hides, I rise the beat until I, until I have a bar guys. I'm pregnant. Pause, bitch. I might shoot the club up. I'm too raw. I'm going in without a rubber. Fucking Joey, man. And Joey, I like how he said like people consider him and Jid two of the best. Well, that's actually, that's that's true because people do fuck with Jid. They do consider him one of the best or one of the best coming up. People do feel like Joey is one of the best. I mean, hell, Q-Tip even said he's one of the best. Like, he passed the torch to him, Kendrick, Cole, and Earl. Um, and I think Joey's one of the best. He's one of my favorites right now, right there with Kendrick, Earl. Um, I want to say Big Crit, but <sighs> that's another video. Um, <laughs> next track is um, Mounted Up. And here I can already tell you without looking at the notes. Like This is him just like... I, it was a banger, first of all. Um, um, he was on top of his game. Like, that's what he was saying. Like, I'm mounted up on top of the game, on top of my game. And he was just laughing. Like, niggas really think they're as good as me or better than I am. And he said, like, call from above telling me, kid, you've been allowed to point at the reemerge uh, kicking lyrics in the South. I'm like, what's the fuck I'm talking about? Kind of reminds me of Andre that was at the Source Awards in 95 or whatever. When I'm... Um, they got booed off the stage and everything after winning. And Andre was like, the South got something to say. That's all I'm going to say about it. I kind of felt that here. Um, he was just saying, like, yo, time to wake up the house. They've been playing. And um, and he, he just saying how he's coming up now. And um, they're tripping because he's giving them tips, but he's also giving them a warning. I actually, I, hold on. I think I need to go on Genius real quick. Let me go on Genius because... Uh, because there was a there were these lyrics about killing and I was like fuck I I'm actually had a note on here about that I said let me talk about this track because that is ridiculous he talked about killing like being a um killer b killer me um on a killing spree no I I'm not doing that I I need to just look it up um 
What did he say? My shoes sway, but don't fuck with no Elvis. I'm from the air of real shit. Killer B killed shit. Killer B real quick. Float like a butterfly. Sting like killer B. Float worth kilograms. You niggas killing me thinking you ill as me. Ah, fuck. <laughs> man. Freaking Jid, man. How was I sleeping on this, dude? I need to go back and listen to the freaking Never Story, man. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say about that track. What else do we have here? The next track is... Just the other day. Just the other day, I got damn broke. That shit. That's pretty catchy. Um... Yeah, just saying, like, every everything was so different just the other day. Like, he was working. Like, he's still working now, but it was, it was a different type of work. Not any street shit, I don't believe, but his people were. His boys were in it. Um, it was hustling for him and his boys. They were working. He was working in a different way, though. He was uh, he's still putting on for a city, but getting showing love he was never going to get back, and he was planting seeds. And he said here, um, never been a dope man, but I'm the dopest of men. That was in the beginning of it. Um, this was just a freaking banger, man. And... It's so weird with this beat. It's like being in a story while it's being written. Not while it's being told. No, no while it's being written. That's what this track feels like. And <clears throat> track number 13, I believe. Yeah, track number 13. I hope I'm saying this right. It's Pachito 2. Uh, like I said, for most of these tracks, like I said, go to Genius if you want all these quotes. Um, there, were, there were so many here, I didn't even write any. What the fuck? Um, but yeah, here he's just saying, like, yo, no one's getting in my way. I can be whatever the fuck I want to be. This is a real head bobber, to be honest. And this was, like, on some god shit. Like, not just the flow, but just some god shit. Like, the vibe, he just feels so comfortable and in his own skin and in this element. It's like he's in his own element here. And it's like he's untouchable. Like, this track is just him sounding like, like a rap god. Not even trying to, like, reference him and him or anything, but that's what I thought. Like, yo, rap god. Um... But yeah, he was talking about how people doubted him and asked him what they wanted to be, like like marine biologist and all this stuff. And he said he wanted to be a rapper. And they were like, oh, what's your dumb ass? Just because you used to listen to Outkast and um, beat the drum pad. And it was another thing that they said. Um, it was before the drum pad part. But yeah, it was just saying, like, I can be whatever I want to be. Get the fuck out of my way. Stop um, telling me all this and getting on my nerves and everything because you never supported me in the first place and da 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 da. I was like, he just has a lot to say, man. It's hard to just remember it. I like writing all that shit. My fucking hand was hurting last night at two in the damn morning. Shit. <laughs> um, and check number 14, hasta luego. Now, where is. Okay, here we go. Not much to say about this track other than when he said, um, I'm the spoon that fed the hungry. Uh, this is a banger. And I just love the beat transition in the hook. That whole... It's like it's almost electronic. But yeah, that part where he just said, I'm the spoon that fed the hungry. I feel like he's saying, like, not just in his city. Not just in his neighborhood. Not just um, for his people. But I feel like just for hip-hop. Because I pe people have been wanting... Hip-hop has been wanting somebody like Jid. Just so versatile. Um, a new kid. Well, a new guy. On the come up. But not, like, taking their time or... Um, being patient, you no, know, just coming for the crown, come up for Kendrick, come up for um, Cole, come up for Drake, come up for all these niggas at the top, the people, like those three, but just for anybody who people think is ahead of him, like he's coming for them, like I didn't feel any competition between him and um, um, Joey Badass or Cole, well maybe it's more so with Cole, I don't think it was intentional, but it just felt that way kind of, not even like it was competition, but I was like, oh, who's who's going to win this? With um, him and um, Joey, I was like, I didn't really feel it. But I feel like he's just coming. Like, he is the spoon that's feeding the hungry. Like, people want somebody like Jid, as hungry as he is, and as, well, that's something. As hungry, he, as hungry as he is, he's feeding the hungry in hip-hop. Because um, they want somebody as versatile as he is, somebody as good as he is, to challenge. And make not hip-hop make hip -hop not seem like it's just... A landslide of who's the top dude or the two or three top dudes. So yeah, he is the spoon that's feeding the hungry. Um, I think he put hip hop on notice with this. He kind of did with the Never Story actually, but he put me on notice with this. Um, I had some notes that I wanted to say about this project. Um, the first note is yeah, if you wanna you want all the quotables, you listen to the project and go on Genius. Damn it. Um, but yeah, he. Man, him and Cole right now, two best in Dreamville, right? Because Cos, Cos was really good. That project earlier this year, that was good. Earth Gang, 
I'm waiting for that project. Um, it's coming, I know. Um, I thought it was supposed to drop in 2018. Maybe it'll drop towards the end. We only have like three weeks left, three, four weeks left um, for the end of the year. Um, but yeah, I, that's pretty much all the notes that I really have to say about that. Um, just freaking versatile, man. Uh, so many quotables. Uh, the Kendrick, Pack, Cole, and Andre Viles. I fucked with them. They didn't rub me the wrong way. Uh, there was actually some other notes I had to say. Uh, oh, here they are. This project really... Uh, it, I needed more listens, I'm not going to lie. But listening to it more made me appreciate it more. And it made me more patient. And shit could easily just go over the top of your head if you're not listening um if you're just listening i mean it's something to listen to because i feel like it is gonna, it's essential it's gonna be essential uh but it can also be really good background music but it is something that's deep and um you got to kind of construct i know i haven't constructed everything on this project but um yeah man everything from how versatile he is from the beat selection but just how versatile he can be on these beats um the flow the subject the theme um, just the vibe with the beats and everything, uh, the come up, how you talk about the come up, um, the doubt and everything, being in, well, boys being in the street, putting on for a city, repping Dreamville, um, um, sobriety, uh, uh, being, um, sad and everything, being in the club, fighting with the girl and trying to be more in touch with the feminist, well, your senses for females, it's like, this fucking versatile, man. Like, this put me on notice, man. Hip-hop better be on notice if they're still asleep, because I was asleep. I need to go back and listen to the Never Story for real, but I'd give this a 7.75 to an 8 out of 10. If you haven't heard this project, please let me know what you think about... Well, if you have heard this project, please let me know what you think about the project in the comment section below and what you think about my review on it. If you haven't heard this project, I definitely recommend that you check it out because there's somebody else coming for that damn spot. I'm telling you. Kendrick Cole... Um, Cole, especially you, you want the damn label, it's your label, Kendrick, Cole, Drake, be on the lookout, freaking Joey, you too, um, uh, hell, Crit, Earl, um, he's, he's coming, Saba's coming, Reason's coming, all these dudes are fucking coming, y'all niggas be, <laughs> be on the lookout, cause if it's about to be that kind of hip hop, um, again, um, not like, not just like the 90s, but the way it was a year or two ago. If it's about to be that kind of hip-hop where it's like not just good music, but competition between some of the dudes in the third and second tiers to the top tier and fighting to get to the top tier, and then those third and second tier dudes fight the top tier niggas, then become top tier niggas, then I'm all for that shit. And um, yeah, check the description. I'll leave the link to stream this in the description below. Hit the like button if you like this review. Share the review. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and like the content that you see. And, um, again, check the descriptions because my social medias are all in there and all other stuff that you can uh, click to um, connect with me even further. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all next time.